Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. We have a wonderful program for you today. Cindy joins us in the kitchen. She has a recipe to help you include winter squash in your diet. One of our superfoods, winter squash. That's our show today. Plus, we'll be taking your calls as always. As always. First, let's go to the news. Let's see what's happening out there. Cranberries may be cavity fighter. Cranberries with turkey are an American holiday mainstay. However, for most, partaking of the healthy berries stops when the holiday season ends. However, new research from the University of Rochester may prompt more people to eat cranberries during the entire year. The study reveals cranberry juice inhibits oral bacteria that produce glucans that bind to teeth and cause dental plaque and cavities. The study cautions, however, most commercial brands of can cranberry contain too much sugar, which only adds to the plaque and cavity problem. This is fascinating, folks. See, plaque and cavities are formed by the growth and acid production by a bacteria called Streptococcus mutans that grows in our mouth, see? And what the scientists are saying is that cranberries prevent the strep mutans from adhering to dental surfaces, so they can't make plaque that leads to cavities. The concept is the same as the use of cranberries for the prevention of urinary tract infections, where they prevent the adherence of bacteria to the bladder wall. Now, one way to enjoy the benefits of cranberries without all that sugar is to eat them as dried cranberries, say perhaps in trail mix. Dried cranberries look just like raisins, only they're bright red. Very tasty. Try it sometime. Decaf may raise LDL levels. Drinking decaffeinated coffee may raise the risk of cardiovascular disease more than regular coffee, discovers a Fuqua Heart Center study of 187 people. Researchers found drinking three to six cups of decaf coffee daily leads to a significant increase in free fatty acids, which in turn leads to an increase in LDL cholesterol and apolipoprotein B, both known risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Researchers also found drinking more than three to six cups of regular caffeinated coffee daily raised the study's blood pressure while decaf did not. The report went on to say that for those who consume modest amounts, that would be one to three cups daily of any type of coffee, decaf or regular, these folks did not show elevations of cholesterol or blood pressure. I'm reminded of one of our favorite sayings, moderation in all things is a foundation for good health. Oh, and one other point. A cup of coffee contains six to eight ounces of coffee. A tankard of coffee may contain 24 ounces or more. Do the math on how you drink coffee. Diet may impact chronic lung disease. Eating a diet of mostly meat, refined starches, and high in salt may increase the risk of developing chronic respiratory diseases, such as COPD, finds a National Institute of Environmental Health study of over 52,000 subjects. The study involved a questionnaire that asked about the consumption of 165 different food items. The researchers found those who ate a diet rich in meat, refined starches, and salt were 43% more likely to report the onset of persistent cough with phlegm than those who consumed a diet high in fruits, vegetables, and soy. Now let's explain this one. It's a little complicated, but stay with me. The types of foods that lead to chronic respiratory ills include a diet rich in red meats, chicken, fish, yes I said chicken and fish, noodles, refined grains, starchy vegetables such as potatoes, along with 11 common snack foods. And these foods are typically highly salted. Now this type of diet is the typical American fast food prepackaged diet and it leads to lung disease. Now the type of diet that protects from lung disease includes a variety of fruits and vegetables, legumes, including soy, poultry, fish, along with whole grains. Now here's the bottom line, all those details. For all of you with lung conditions or want to avoid them, all types of meat, including chicken and fish, are okay, but only if your diet is rich in fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and low in salt. I'm reminded of another one of our favorite sayings, fruits and vegetables, essence of a healthy diet. Now here's a report on another health benefit of vegetables. Vegetables reduce the risk of pancreatic cancer. New research from the University of California finds diets rich in fruits and vegetables are associated with a 50% reduction in the risk of pancreatic cancer. The 50% reduction was associated with eating at least five servings per day of onions, garlic, beans, carrots, and sweet potatoes, cruciferous and green leafy vegetables, along with brightly colored squash. Researchers also found the most protective fruit against the deadly cancer was citrus fruits.
A couple of points that need to be made. You know, the cancer protection effect of fruits and vegetables comes from fresh fruits and vegetables, not canned. Also, the study defined one serving as veggies as one half a cup, one serving of green leafy vegetables as two cups, and one serving of fruit as one medium-sized piece of fruit. Folks, pancreatic cancer carries a very poor prognosis. Only 4% survive five years. Now, the dreaded cancer kills about 30,000 Americans every year. So any steps you can take to prevent this deadly disease is absolutely worth the effort. Of interest, the study found that squash is one of the super veggies in preventing pancreatic cancer. Squash the often overlooked vegetables. I recommend you include more of it in your diet. Today on Your Health, Cindy joined us in the kitchen. She has a great recipe for winter squash. This is delicious and nutritious. Join us for this one on Your Health.